This is um, a different date than initially scheduled, but um, properly announced. Thursday, January 22nd, 2015, meeting at the North Andover Board of Health. We're now called to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, consistent with what we've done with some other means, um, we have guests here, so maybe we'll start with your items so you don't have to stay for all the fun. But um, we have a couple guests here from Northeast Mosquito, Northeast Massachusetts Mosquito Control representatives. They've come out every year for the past several years and done an overview of plans for the year. So I'll give you the floor. Okay. Uh, my name is Bill Mahaffey. I'm the district supervisor from Northeast Mass Mosquito Control. And um, I know it's early in the year, but we have to start thinking about mosquitoes. Even with well, there's no snow on the ground, but there could be. And what's that mean? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, everybody wants to know what the season's going to be like, and that's like trying to predict who's going to win the Super Bowl. But um, it's, yeah, it's obvious. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a tough thing to predict. You know, last year we had, um, you know, heavy rains around the 4th of July with a few inches of rain, and then but the water table was so low that the, the ground really sucked everything up. So we had, by midsummer, we had um, areas that normally we'd be treating for mosquitoes were dry. Um, some of the areas that can promote triple E virus, um, cedar swamps, white cedar swamps and red maple swamps where uh, the root mass of those trees, you get what they call crypts, which um, they pockets that uh, the mosquitoes really like that. That's where they breed. And that's um, pretty much the um, habitat for the triple E mosquitoes. Those um, were pretty well dried up by last summer. Um, we had a number of pools submitted to the um, Department of Public Health for testing was not an all-time low, but it was we submitted 804 pools for virus testing. 2013, we submitted 1,315. So it really dropped off. Out of um, that 804 pools, only seven tested positive for West Nile virus. Um, and we had two for triple E virus. That was that's, in the, that's in the district. In right? the whole yeah. county, uh -huh. yes. And our county is, um, all the towns within Essex County minus Lawrence, Essex, Gloucester, and Rockport. Those four communities are not part of the program. We don't do any mosquito control at all in their communities. But we do have, in addition to um, the 30 remaining towns and cities, we also have Winthrop and Revere, which are a part of Suffolk County. They belong to Essex County Mosquito Control, if you will. Um, they joined us before there was a Suffolk County Mosquito Control. When Suffolk County um, formed a mosquito control program, those two communities stayed with us. So that's they're part of um, Northeast Mass Mosquito Control. Um, we did have a couple human cases, one in Peabody, which is still pending whether or not that person uh, contracted uh, West Nile out in, was West Nile, right? Yeah. yeah, out in um, California, they did some traveling, and the um, incubation time was kind of around that date when they traveled. There was another um, positive in Saugus, very late in the season, into October, and um, those are the only two we had human cases. Um, the last year for North Andover specifically, we. Um, treated all the catch basins in town. It was a total of 4,176 basins. We started, we typically start around the 1st of May, um, you know, when the mosquitoes are starting to um, come about in their environment. 
um, typically catch basins breed the species that promote or carry um, West Nile virus. Um, they like the organic um, stagnant water. Um, so we started treating catch basins May 1st and we completed um, everything by August 22nd last year, which was earlier than ever. We treated more catch basins than ever. We treated um, 52,000 basins. Um, North Andover, we started on July 7th and completed it on July 31st. We aren't in town every day because we've got 32 communities and we have a small crew. We have about um, 10 full-time people and five seasonals. Some of that is administrative staff. But um, within that time frame of July, we treated you know 4,100 basins. We also did a lot of siding earlier in, in April. Um, Susan had some requests to look at abandoned properties. That's become a real issue with um, abandoned properties with pools that will breed mosquitoes. Not if they're deep and full of water, but a lot of times people have a, a cover on them that bellies with you know, rainwater, and that's um, a real problem we found. Um, we'll find boats in yards that breed the DPW had boats one year. Really? We mm -hmm. were trying to figure out where the mosquitoes were coming from, and we found two or three boats that had a couple inches of water and were just crawling. And something like that we wouldn't treat. We'd dump the, the boat, you know, tip it over, more IPM than having to use, um, you know, chemicals. Um, we also did three adult deciding applications at your request, um, all in July. The Winter Street, Bruin Hill, Hollow Tree areas on uh, the 10th of July, Diametto. On the 17th, we did the Carter Field area. And then on the 31st of July, we did the Sunset Rock area. And these were all resident requests that came through you people. Um, for this year, um, I would suggest uh, keeping the adult deciding the same if you wanted. I think it works really well. It worked well last year. I notify us, we schedule it in within the week and um, you know, get it done. A lot depends on the weather and all that. Um, again, it's, it's gonna be hard to predict what the season's gonna bring. But um, that's about all I have to do. Yeah, um, just to add to what, what Bill was talking about with the adult deciding, we've already sent the notice out to all the boards of health to notify residents if they want to exclude their properties, they need to get their notice in by by the long copy of what it looks mm -hmm. like. Okay, mm -hmm. by March first to the town clerk, and we again this year will come out and pick them all up. Um, just so you know, last year there were 13 residents that excluded their property. Um, one additional resident tried to get his in, but it was in April. We're not able to accept them if they're not into the town clerks by March first. Um, so we will provide you with a list again this year once we know who those residents are. Does the public, uh, can they get this on the town website? We'll update it. The other one, I think the other one's still on, but it's probably very similar. It's identical. Okay. Because okay. this it's, doesn't even have a year on that, so. Yeah, no, yeah, and so we purposely identical. did that it should be there, um, because regulation we'll double check. hasn't changed. Okay. And the form, we didn't see any need to put a date on it. Um, they need to opt in every year, or once they, they opt out. Every year. I'm sorry, when they opt yes, out, yes, the annual. So they they do have to repeat. Yes. That election. And what's yeah. the procedure that they have to do? Um, all they need to do is we created this form to make it easy for them. They just need to fill out the information on the form. Um, we don't need any extras, such as I'm a beekeeper. I have an allergy. All we need to know is who they are, um, their address, their telephone number. If they are a tenant and they opt out, but the landlord chooses to have the property sprayed, the landlord's wishes supersede the tenants. Um, and we do try to let everybody know that we've never had that issue come up, um, and we hope we never do. Uh, but all they need to do is fill that out. If they don't fill that out, they can just give us their name, address, um, telephone number, and just say, please exclude my property. And we'll accept that as well. Because it does Susan, say there's a, uh, excuse me, Susan, there's a, uh, another form. Uh, if you want to have your property sprayed, correct me if I'm mistaken. Right, those, those are the three yeah. sprays that, that we had three. 
individual requests, and that's also online. That was last year was our first year that the board put that in our place it is. Um, how do people know about this about operating that, yeah. to give that option um, online that someone could do online. that. If the town puts it online, it's online. It's also on our website. Okay. Um, so underneath the frequently asked right? questions, there's a little section on excluding properties and the state regulation pertaining to that. Um, but you do put that up on the website. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying that's the only so, way they know about it, right? Is, is by being on the website? That's the main, yeah. That's well, the main way. This program. Yeah. That's okay. why we're doing yeah. this. People that um, yeah. want to explore yeah. their property or they have learned, they yeah. really learned. Last year, yeah. last year, the Eagle Tribune did a little story about it okay. about a week or so ahead of the market. I think they were at the February meeting or you were at February and yes. the reporter was there, they did a very small blurb, but it probably would be to our benefit remind. to yeah. talk to them about it. They don't, it's not, doesn't become a front page thing, but just in matter of notification. Mm -hmm. The procedure for um, excluding your property is a state regulation too. It, you know, that's why the um, March 1st deadline, we had people before that would call in day. July, in August. Okay. And the day of the spring. The day of the spring. And, yeah. and we have a whole database. Um, our sprayers are all computerized. They have, you know, no sprays. Um, the driver will get an alarm coming down the street, and we can set how far before that property that the alarm goes off. They physically have to shut the sprayer off, but it's a warning, you know, visual and audible. And, um, you know, so to try to update that, with every day with no sprays coming in, it's it's pretty tough. So, um, but the March 1st deadline ensures that they are on the no spray list from, I believe it's April 1st to the following May 31st. So March. it's a whole year, or is it March 31st? Yeah, it goes from April 1st to April March. April 1st to March 30th, yeah. yeah. So it's for the that, you know, coming year. And one of the reasons it's early is not, because it just doesn't cover just a spray. It covers all mosquito control. It, it can. You were talking about, so it will. You'll be opting out of even having your drains getting larvicided. Is that you what you can? Well, no. It's just the two types are available two here. Types, to choose. Right. So, Correct. So, so what there's it two actually is, yeah. is is we sent this form Good. out as a courtesy to those that want to exclude their property. Mm -hmm. Someone that's excluding their property is actually excluding their property from all right. pesticide applications. So even mm -hmm. power companies that want to spray for weeds. If the form is in, they sh okay. should not be spraying, which is why it goes to the town clerk. The town oh, clerk okay. is supposed to be keeping Good. a record of this. Um, now, it, it really, because it's mosquito control, we keep a record of it, mm -hmm. um, but the state has told us we need to do this now. Okay. Good, thank you. The, the state is trying, I don't mean to interrupt, uh, the state is trying to um, take a look at that whole protocol and try to get input um, it'll go to you know public um, input also um, is some some towns you know want it to put it on their town census every year so that people can opt out right there which seem is easy I think it mm -hmm. to me it seems like an easy way to do it but maybe just doing that people don't get all the information too mm -hmm. so they could you know want to have larva siding with BTI products, which is a bacterial product we use, not a chemical pesticide, and they don't want a delta siding, but if they check both, they, they don't get anything. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people don't know the difference, so. And if they do opt out, and then they get the information, say April, June, and they say, okay, it's really not that bad, they cannot opt back in. They're out for the year, mm -hmm. which means they, their area may not be as well protected that year. Mm -hmm. So it really is in their best interest to get all the information, and, and we're available. They can call us at any time um, prior to making their decision. Now we've never done aerial spraying in Essex County. Is that true? Years ago. Years ago. Um, well, before was it the? I, I want to say the '60s. Yeah. It was some C3s, but yeah, no, it's it's never gotten to that level. That. Southeast Mass, Plymouth County, Bristol County, that's, it's endemic down there. It's right. um, the Hockamock Swamp is a um, area that's well known for triple E virus. So, you know, in human cases. We um, had a uh, cottage in Plum Island years ago, and I can remember when I was a child, 
which was years ago, many years ago, uh, they had uh, spraying, we go spraying on the uh, on the island. Uh, on the beach? Yeah, the beach. Huh? With, with my aircraft truck or truck or truck. Truck. Yeah. Yeah. My aircraft. For mosquitoes. For mosquitoes. Mm. Yeah. 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 That was a long, long time ago. And I do not know how inclusive it is. Let me ask you something. Now, a lot of time and effort and energy and money has been spent, rightly so, to eradicate uh, mosquito-borne ailments and diseases. But is that the real culprit, or is it the, the dead tick? Because Two different I know things. so many people, but, but the state spends, I think last year, the state spent I almost $60,000. Yeah, yeah. Primarily in education, if not exclusively in education, on the deer tech. Meanwhile, there's so many people that I know that have Lyme oh, disease. Yeah. To me, that 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 really is the is the culprit, not the mosquito. Then again, we have plans in place to address mosquito-borne ailments, and as such, you know, the numbers are very low as far as people getting sick by mosquitoes, oh, but, but not yeah. not the deer tech though. So I think that maybe money is being misappropriated. Uh, uh, are not properly appropriate. Uh, certainly, it, it money is wisely spent for the dead tech, but what's there for? I mean, uh, for, for mosquito, but what's there yeah. for the dead tech? Well, well it, it's, it's, it's the tick-borne diseases are becoming a lot more prevalent, and they're, the difference between the control of the two is with a tick, it's very localized. You may have ticks in your yard. Um, but your neighbor or, you know, the people down the street may not, where with mosquitoes, they're not isolated to a property. So the control mechanisms are completely different. Where we can do a truck spray and knock down that mosquito population before it continues to carry on the virus, or, you know, or amplify the virus, with ticks you're actually spraying a single property or putting control out for that property. So it's not something that could be widespread. We can't spray for ticks. You need to put a different type of material down. Perhaps you can't spray for ticks, but you can educate people better. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, absolutely. I think that, that that's an area that uh, and there are some things we could do a lot better uh, throughout the state than, than what we have. I know yeah. that I'm yeah. very, very careful when I, I go out my yard oh, because yeah. I've had so many physical problems in the past that I, I just can't mm -hmm. afford more physical problems and so I address it, address it properly, but right. not everyone. I know we attended a, um, it was called a field day down at Miles Standard State Park. It's every October that um, all the mosquito controls put on and it's, you know, um, pesticide board is there about, you know, safe handling and all that. And there was a guy from, he was from the South Shore somewhere. Yeah. He talked about ticks and there's new diseases, if you will, that are being found that they carry that are much worse than Lyme. Yeah. So, and he's, he's um, associated somehow with the state. I don't know it's all associated the, with UMass. Yeah, I think it's through UMass. Yeah. But they're really looking at this. So, I think down the road, and it may not be that far away, that you're going to see more about tick control. You know, we've strictly been mosquito control. It would change the whole thing how we did, we'd have to have more help. And yeah. um, just like Robin said, to, to control them um, is totally different from what we do. But you're right, you know, it is a problem. I totally uh, agree with you on that. So, I, I don't um, think there's too many yards either that don't have them. I mean, we have hundreds, yeah, they like leaf litter, we have hundreds you know, of cases in North Andover from the public health, that's so why I get all the reports. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, we have no mosquito-borne diseases, but we have hundreds of cases of Lyme yeah. disease. Hundreds of North the end of it? Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. What does it take? I mean, it's just... Uh, and then not just Lyme disease, it's anaplasmosis, yeah. yeah. it's mm -hmm. all those. And um, personally, well, you know, it's debilitating because yeah. I've had it. With, with had Lyme, it. for the longest time, even though we knew it existed, Doctors were reluctant to right. give that as the diagnosis yep. for physical yep. problems. A lot of times they didn't know. Yeah. You know, the testing was way behind. There, there is something that you can do, like perimeter, like you can treat yeah, your perimeter. Barrier, but yeah, barrier. barrier, which yeah. I don't know. Maybe at another board meeting we may want to talk about that. I could get some stuff together. We should. Okay. Yeah. The thing with that in close proximity, you know, in, in um, neighborhoods, say, 
for what you know a lot of houses you do a barrier treatment in your yard then mm -hmm. you're gonna get it in your yard you're gonna you know so it's like <laughs> where do you oh your cat's gonna go next door to your neighbor's yard yeah, yeah. Bring that house anyway. it's yeah. Like yeah. back to you how do you control that you know it's yeah. it's a tough thing yeah. it really is so well, good to hear they're looking at it and even talking about yeah. it yeah yeah maybe yeah. we can get that person from you man. There is somebody that look up his name. Yeah. yeah, we can we can <laughs> find out some information. Okay. About That'd be that. great because so, that really is a problem. Yeah, here. people no. are very interested. He's, in this problem, yeah. he's a great guy that with a lot of information. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you might want to have him come and talk. Yeah. Too, the other so. thing with Lyme disease is it's like almost a year round. You know, I got the ticket at the end of November. Around the end of December, so it's lasting. You know, your exposure time is so much more with the tick. Right. No, it's like a two-year cycle that, um, you know, the nymphs and the larvae and the adults, and it's the nymphs that are the problem, oh, the yeah. small yeah. ones, yeah. yeah. That it's all, I don't, yeah. you know, I, I <laughs> heard this guy, but I'm not involved in it, so um, I, I don't want to say something that is totally wrong or off base, but it's, it's to do with their feeding, and when they feed to take a blood meal, that's um, and the nips are like very active in doing that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you get an adult on you, and they're easy to find. But a yeah. nymph, it's so small, you know, a lot get overlooked. Yeah, and it, it really is when they say it's the size of a it period. Is. It, it really is. It is. You can't see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I had it's read, and, and this is uh, dated information. Um, at least thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of people in the United States. Have suffered. Oh yeah, from oh, Lyme disease. Yeah. yeah. And how many people in the United States have died from mosquito-borne ailments? I mean, it's 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 it's, it's so out of whack. Quite a few, it's actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. A few, few compared to hundreds of thousands of people that have been affected by yeah. dead tick. I, mean, I I don't understand yeah. it. This makes no sense. Mosquitoes yeah. are responsible for more deaths than any other species worldwide. Yeah. 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 But now in the United States, dead tick is the dead tick Lyme disease is yeah, really becoming it off. A it, it, big, and it gets worse every year. Yeah, it's yeah. physically yeah. debilitating. Every year. Okay, well that'll be maybe our next. Bill, sounds like you're going to have a new directive next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've talked about it. The state has talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah like, like I said, it would have to, um, it would be a total restructure for mosquito yeah. controls right, right. if they... Right. Uh, so they know. wouldn't have a stand they might consider. Well, the, I don't think the Department of Ag would just say, okay, now mosquito control is going to do tick control too. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Well, they where do you begin? Yeah. And budget wise? Have a plan, right? yeah. 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 Yeah, but you talk about budget. I mean, what, what, what is the medical cost for these thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that have Lyme disease? Mm -hmm. And once it's you get it, staggering. it's staggering. Absolutely. And, and it's there for one time, if not the rest of your life. It is staggering. So uh, I think that more money has so to be I think that's a conversation for another day. Next meeting. Yeah. Next meeting. Yeah. Or the next. But as far as mosquito control, so you'll have a vector management plan next Correct. month or so that we'll have access to, and Correct. the number of surveillance traps will be similar with um, Esteban. Yes. Esteban, it's, um, yeah, right now they're, um, everything's been cleaned and put away and tested, and so it's ready to go. Um, we have our historical trapping sites, which, you know, is a good um, indicator for the community. Um, you know, and we generally have two of those that he adds on to as needed. Correct, correct. If we get a hit, he'll put out some, uh, you know, a positive hit somewhere. He'll he'll put out some temporary traps to see if it's localized and more widespread, and you know, go from there. And usually, you're the first to, you know, before we do. <laughs> I think you get the call before we do from Department of Public Health. Um, but then we coordinate, you know, what you want to do about that. So. Now you mentioned that you have historical locations for these traps. Are you thinking about expanding? Because much of North End of is a big swamp. Yeah, but again, it's um, it's an overall um, what do you want to say um, cross section, of, if if you will, of the whole what's happening in the whole town. We can't have one in every neighborhood. Um, well, in the past, it's not always even a hit in North Andover. When there's been something, we uh, ha uh, Haverhill was positive. They put some up yeah. that direction. Yeah. Andover, so yeah. 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 he treats yeah. it as a district, not as Cor just individual towns. So right. correct. It's more of a part of it is uh, access to power and yeah. safety, where the public can't kind of 
right. get at things and yeah, we've had vandalism before, and they're not cheap. You know, they're kind of expensive to replace, but so that's why we don't really give out where the locations are. You know, you people would know, but uh, you know, to the general public, we don't give out locations. And DPH won't say either. You know, they'll just say a general area. So, um, but if you have it, you have it. it. And the thing is, people don't realize. You, you people may realize that. The problem is not the mosquitoes, it's the birds. And that's why typically the virus is later in the season because the birds migrating through. Um, you could have very low numbers of mosquitoes like we did last year, and invariably we had those um, you know, hits later in the season. Um, you could have very few mosquitoes, but if, it's, if the virus is in the bird population, one mosquito could bite a bird that's infected and then off you go with you know transmitting that so um, yeah it's not totally about oh there's so many mosquitoes we're going to have you know 300 hits this year uh, you could have very low numbers and still have a lot of hits can right. all birds and mammals be affected by the mosquito that it's funny because in the bird population, there's uh, the corvids, the crows, the blue jays are the ones that primarily um, are the top of the list for um, transmitting that disease. Um, the DPH is a whole list of the birds that it's affected, and, and certain birds they aren't affected that much. Uh, I think it's maybe where they you know, higher up in trees. The mosquitoes don't fly real high. Um, birds that are probably on the ground foraging and things like that. Crows will go after roadkill and things like that. So, um, you know, they, they're on the ground um, foraging and that's when they're going to get bit by a mosquito. Um, Mice yeah, so are also an issue too, are they not? Pardon? Mice are also an issue. For West Nile or something like I'm that? I'm asking, I'm not telling. I, 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 um, uh, That's Lyme. Is that Lyme? Yeah, that would be Lyme disease. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. White, white tail. Yeah. yeah. White foot and all stuff. White foot and Yeah. Uh, yeah. But actually, turkeys are more. Um, oh. Turkeys and gophers mm -hmm. carry it more than. Carry what? Line. Really? Yeah. Turkeys. They're 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 responsible for the mice. I have tons of I yeah. talked with a, a guy <laughs> from Maine who he, <laughs> he said he thinks that the turkeys are the problem because yeah. really? before, there's more and more turkeys too. Yeah. 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 He said yeah. before yeah. they were reintroduced in Maine, there was um they never saw deer ticks. Really? Yeah. And no they say turkeys will eat ticks, but they also he's they hunted turkeys and they had loaded, he said. Really? With, yeah. with ticks, we so. have a lot of turkeys yeah. in town. And they go yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. so, That's interesting. Yeah. I don't yeah. want <coughs> So they may eat them, but they also yeah. wow. <laughs> carry them, carry them yeah. too. That's that's interesting. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. You have turkeys as pets, don't you? <laughs> I feed them. To be honest with you, I know well, I'm supposed go. to, but that's it. Yeah. Well, so, so, Bill, knock on wood in North Andover, we had two or maybe three years with not any positive West Nile testing. Several years before that, um, we had several years in a row where we were positives, and there was this um, sort of a seven-year cycle with with the mosquitoes and, and so on. And I talked with Stavon a couple of times. He yeah. thought that that cycle was maybe broken now broken and then yeah. becoming more endemic but now are, are we sort of not really seeing that or is that are we, it hasn't been long enough to really see that or um it's hard to say it's um if i look back on this chart i'll i'll pass this out too i don't have enough copies of it i'll leave what i have um it's kind of a preliminary bmp for you people um If we go back, say 2007, 2007 and 8, there was no positives um, for Triple E. 2009, we had 13. 2010 and 11, none. That's for the whole district. That's for the whole district. 2012, 14. That was the highest year. That was that was a tough year for us. Then it dropped off. 2013 was four. Last year was two. But um, if I try to find specific to North Andover. Um, we've had more 
clients from West Nile that you have had. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Okay, um, this is, you know what, as State Barn wrote, um, there were no arbovirus detections in North Andover in 2014, and there were no West Nile virus infected mosquitoes collected from adjacent communities. This was most welcome news since North Andover has a large urban center and major suburban habitats radiating in all directions, favoring the development of the West Nile virus vectors. It was not that long ago there were repeated detections of West Nile virus in vectors collected in North Andover. In fact, West Nile virus has been collected in North Andover mosquitoes in five of the past seven years. So that's seven years, you know, we've had hits. Mm -hmm. Last year was one year that we didn't have any. Okay. So, yeah. And those, we'll have a, a better uh, feel on those numbers when the the vector management plan comes out and all that for your people within the month. So okay. I think Esteban just finished that and, and um, you know we'll put that all together and, and send it out to you. So oh. hopefully for your next meeting, which is next month or February. Yeah, we have a monthly meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So Second. last year was kind of an anomaly. Um, we can't We'll we can hope for that again, but um, I will take it, but <laughs> um, it's hard to tell. No, the communication is good. It has been good that toward the start of the school year that we talk about whether we ought to do the field sprays and so on. So mm -hmm. that will be, you know, an option in our plan again, I presume? Correct. Correct. We'll, you know, offer the barrier spray. Um, North Andover schools are pretty good at, with their IPM plan. Yeah. So, um, you know, Robin is involved with that. And... Um, out, out of those 4,100 plus catch bases we treated, you know, the schools got all treated too. So, and we use a long-term BTI product that, um, treating in July like that, we use a product that is good for 90 days, which will take you into, you know, the beginning of October. So, we, we tend to use products longer longevity at the beginning of the season that will carry into October, and then we kind of taper off because, you know, no sense putting in a 180-day product in August. You know, you know, by October is usually the end of the mosquito season. Hopefully, mm -hmm. so. So I don't need to contact the schools. They're they're compliant. Yeah, we'll check all Where that. We check all okay. that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're yeah. Um, next week. The notices should be going out to all the schools, mm -hmm. letting them know please update or create a plan if you don't have one, and we'll I'll send an email with a list to you so you know which schools are compliant, which schools aren't. No problem. Okay. One thing with catch basin treatments, too, I just want to touch on is um, we've been trying to do a better job coordinating with the um, DPWs because mm -hmm. no sense of us treating basins and having them clean them out the next week. <laughs> you know, after you put a $3 briquette in for the season in May, and um, you could essentially, they aren't going to breed for a while, but essentially if they cleaned in May and you lose that treatment, um, come... August, you over, could have right in the prime, you know, mosquito time. DPW you could have. North Andover's been giving you what you need? Or? Yeah, they tend to clean areas, right. it seems like. Yeah. And uh, we try to coordinate with them when, uh, where they are, and we stay out of that. So, so they have their own truck, too. Yeah. So some towns have to contract that out, and it's no. waiting for them to <laughs> get the contractor in and do the cleaning. But we try to coordinate all that. And, so, good. All right. Very good. Thank so you. We'll, I'm going to leave these. Um, like I said, this is preliminary. It was just put together the last day or two, and um, the final one will be out with more information too. So. Great. So. Thank you for coming. We always like having coming in uh, January and better than waiting until February and telling them when they have one week to yeah. get their, yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. their property exclusions in. But, well, hopefully we'll get the word out and uh, have everybody, won't have any late ones trying to get in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. every town has a late one. Yeah. So. We really appreciate the service that you provide us here. Mm -hmm. Most importantly to me is every question that 
I get about mosquitoes that, of course, I'm not the expert for. I will send right to them, and I've never had anyone call me back and say, oh, I didn't get my answer. So they always get an answer. So we're really happy about that. Well, we try. <laughs> you do. So. And we'll see about um, that information on the ticks, too. Yeah. That the we'll gentleman's right. name right. and right. all that. Yeah. Never know. We might have yours next. You might as well mm -hmm. jump in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never yeah. okay. know. Good. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a healthy summer. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. All right. Then we can go back to our quarter of our agenda. So um, we have no public hearings tonight. We have approval of minutes from November 20th. 2014, so Larry, have those. Okay, I've read the motion. I've read them over. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of. Uh, has, everyone, first of all, has everyone read the minutes? Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that uh, to approve the North End Board of Health meeting minutes Thursday, November 20th, 2014. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. You can sign that. Um, not really any old business. I mean, mosquito is old business and new business. Yeah. Um, well, some old things, you know, <laughs> that we normally go over in December just kind of get pushed forward. Sorry, it's kind of a little old to talk about permits and things, but we can do that. So, you want to start with? So, the, we'll move into communications, and we have one item to add on to that because it's of public interest, but we'll do that at the end. So. We can do the middle school viral outbreak from a little bit ago. So Debbie, you want to maybe start with that? I, I did speak with Cheryl yesterday, but you were more intimate with it than I was. So um, yeah, unfortunately, I was a little intimate with it. But um, it, I think, um, I think that we did a really good job. Uh, I think Cheryl and, and the school staff did a great job in, in um, ed, you know, educating our parents because. Like usual with that virus, it's when one child gets it, the next gets it. And I was really apprehensive that it was going to go from the middle school to the Thompson to the, blah, 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 to the high school, because usually that's the way it does. But that didn't happen. So I think parents were really good on recognizing that you needed to isolate and keep the kids home. And I think it was a good idea that we, you know, close the school the next day and then it was a weekend. Um, so I think on that part of the education and all that, I think that we did a good job, you know. I say mostly the school, it didn't really have too much to do with me. But I think the part that we that was our weak link was the cleaning. Um, and I think uh, two components there. One is those Don rugs in the middle school. I mean, I, I think that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's hard to clean rugs, you know. And I think what happened was, well, I know what happened, was rugs the, like like a rugs. Yeah, they have They're rugs carpet. in the hallways. It's carpeted. It's, no, they have carpeted. Carpet. Carpet. Yeah. Carpet. So when they were vom they They're vom vomiting, they're vomiting in the hallway. Yeah. And um and so the fact that it was carpeted was the one problem, but then I think it got aerosolized and it was not cleaned with the proper solution that was going to kill the norovirus. So there you got it almost like compounding the problem. And I. I, I know now that they do have the, the protocol, but they did not have the right cleaning solution. So that was... Is that this the contractor? Th this was the janitorial staff. And they thought they had it, and I was a little... I mean, I must have said five times, are you sure? Are you sure? Because you can clean till the cows come home, and if you do not clean with the right, you know, um, cleaner, it, it doesn't kill it. Like, it just doesn't, and it's but a very But how long does specific. the virus persist in the environment? A couple weeks. A yeah. couple weeks. Live on that doorknob for a couple weeks. It'll live on, yeah, a couple it's weeks. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. That's why the norovirus is so nasty, is because it lives so long on inanimate objects, and it has, it. you need such a small amount of, was it the viral load or whatever, um, it's just so contagious, and, it, and it's, it's very, Hardy. It's a very hardy virus that lives for a long time. So um, when the
when they said to me, well, we are, you know, we have, we have the stuff to clean, I'm thinking, well, you didn't even know about this because the kids just started vomiting. So anyway, so as a result, they had to, they had, they cleaned 24 hours, day and a half or whatever, and they had to clean it all over again because they didn't do it with the right stuff. So you know, Cheryl, Cheryl talked a little bit about that yesterday. So, so if you will, the lucky thing was that this, this happened on a Thursday. Right. So and the school was closed Friday. Because mm -hmm. they had... Friday and, and, and the weekend. So there was one round of cleaning and then they went back and it redid clean. everything, but mm -hmm. the weekend was there, so it, yep. it didn't require the closing right. of the school. Yeah. And the other thing was, was one of the janitors, I mean, you're still shedding the virus. Um, he said a good 48 hours afterwards. Um, and so one of the janitors was vomiting all night and was there at seven o'clock cleaning with no masks, no gloves, no nothing. Like a dutiful employee. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah. So. I think the parents and the students and now we had, you know, better control on that than we did on the actual, you know, cleaning aspect of it. But definitely that's been, you know, um, addressed and I, I don't think that'll happen again. So I, I think we did a good job. You know, you're never going to prevent the norovirus. What you just hope to do is contain it because um, we're not going to prevent it anywhere. But like in the nursing homes, um, I mean, our goal is just to, um, you know, contain. I mean, quarantine, clean, and and um, you know, prevent the spread. And I think again, sort of the compliment I heard from Cheryl was it all around from school to health, the to town manager mm -hmm. to youth yeah. services. Yeah. Everybody was on the same page with this. Yeah. That when the schools closed because of an infectious agent, they closed the youth center at the same time because mm -hmm. if all those kids were home from school and the healthy ones yeah. mm -hmm. who were carrying virus or kids one sick kids. kid who wasn't quite sick yet went to the youth center, it was just going to continue to explode. So it actually required the cancellation or the moving of both the play and the dance, mm -hmm. but they were good on communication. Yep. And Cheryl told me they got a pretty fair amount of phone calls, but it was all positive. They didn't get right. complaints. The other thing about the youth center, too, is what um, it's mainly middle school students that go there. Mm -hmm. It's not high school students. It's not the elementary. It is the middle school. So that really was a good thing, you know, because that, that's where they would have gone. How long has this virus been around, this Novavirus? Well, I think it's been around forever, hasn't it? Frank? Yeah. They're just naming it now. Yeah, I mean, it's, they it just around when it. I was in medical school 20 years ago. Yeah. They just named it now. Yeah, it got oh, famous. So, so, so it's, no, no, no. it's a new name. It's a new name, virus. but it's an old no, virus. It, right. it, got, it, got, yeah. it got famous with the cruise ships. It's actually famous ah. in North Andover. They now call it Nam's Bola. Yeah, they named <laughs> it. NAMS, North Andover Middle School Bola, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Ebola. Yeah. And it, it burned itself out just like Ebola. It just, yeah. it, it kind of hit with fierce oh, and fury and 200 and something kids sent home. And What Cheryl told me was that when they added it all up, the kids that day, the kids that were out sick that day or that went home or the reported as being maybe sick was 359. Wow, that's, yeah. that's. Ooh. It wasn't zero. She said they then went and checked the other grade schools, and a couple of them had as many as 20 kids that were out, but it never got to the same level. And, and not all the cases were reported. Right. Well, sure, yes, yeah. but because our 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 kid got sick that night, mm -hmm. so he never got counted. Didn't get counted. So, mm -hmm. um, but that was the number they knew about. So it may have been 30 percent or more higher than that. But because things were isolated, hope you know. It, it did burn itself out. It didn't get a chance to spread around continuously through the rest of the school. So, and we did do. I did get stool samples and send them into the state. I mean, we we pretty much knew that that's yeah, where they were running around her and Michelle oh, yeah. around picking up samples. Well, I was picking them up on Saturday, yeah, exactly. giving them out on Saturday. So then we picked them up on Monday. Monday. Yeah. But anyway, um, and they were positive. Yeah, you know, even though we knew we knew that that's what it was. I always feel comfortable having a diagnosis for sure, you know, because like, what if it wasn't? Like, it, and it was so contained just to the middle school that if it was like all over the whole town, I'd think, oh, well, good, you know, every, I mean, just to get the siblings out of it, but. You had I a think nagging concern. I had a yeah. nagging concern, so I, I was glad that we had, you know, I mean, that we did just take a few random samples and get it tested because that, I think that's always, I mean, as a matter of fact, and I was just telling Sue today that in a nursing home we're having a few um, flu cases and they're not testing, they're just treating. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to you've get some tests because we need to know. There's a shortage of the tests. 
You can't oh, get the is test. That, is that why? What? Yeah, That's you, what can't, you, can't, just... you can't get the test. I've, I've been noticed by <sighs> two hospitals that I cover. They, they're saying that there's a nationwide shortage of the test because the vaccine doesn't cover it. There's been such yeah, a demand for the test, test, they don't well, make that, enough But I think also this year they recommended when somebody's sick, you test and you treat everybody, right? Well, you, you don't even bring them in. You just prescribe if they have if they. Yeah, but without they have testing, so how do yeah. oh, well, so they, I, they, they don't want them coming into the offices. Right. Because yeah. there's no herd immunity this right, year. Right, right. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I think that in a uh, nursing home or something like that, we need to know, uh, is it or not? Because that, that's a. Uh, well, I think my point is yeah. that they, they, they actually yeah, may not may have, not have, have it. Yeah. Well, so that if the hospitals don't have it, I think the nursing homes are down the food chain a little well, bit. Yeah. Well, the, no, actually, the reason that they didn't, they didn't, because I, I did talk to um, the infectious disease, was she just said, well, the doctor just felt like, what the heck, it's the, we'll just treat him anyway. It doesn't matter whether it is or it isn't. And I'm like, well, it's what it does matter. And I'm not saying that you need to trust anybody. We gotta, Because if it is, then, you know, we, we, we should know that people, are, you know, this one, this one, this one, and, and not just, because um, if, if it's not the flu, then... It, it, you know, um, it's sort of a different ball game, but anyway. So but the whole communication season. thing worked well. Cheryl also, also was happy that <coughs> once this happened, they, she had a, a specific direct contact at DPH that was her person that she talked to through the whole process that she had a direct line to her and, mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, cooperated. So mm -hmm. the important thing was it was identified, it was an action plan was put together, it was managed, yeah, everybody okay. cooperated and it, and it worked. Absolutely, it's very well managed. Thank you. Nice job. Yes, we do. I'm never worried when I'm on a weekend. Yeah, so some week vacation. <laughs> I'm never worried. They take care of it, whatever it is. Oh, it's done very professionally, yeah. and yeah. it's obviously effective. Um, per permit renewal status. Um, uh, Lisa, who's sick, <laughs> possibly <laughs> she was flu. Very <laughs> sick uh, in the last few days, and uh, we said you don't yeah. need to come tonight. Um, did terrific job. Uh, we had a lot of, of course, we still had a lot of phone calling, but we didn't, I think we had maybe two of the restaurants that, you know, were the last day <laughs> um, that, uh, but we don't have anyone, any restaurants that are out, you know, out now. There still are some dumpsters. We still have to chase people to pay their dumpsters, but they will pay a double fee. Um, speaking of fees, I did research the uh, the idea that Frank had about whether or not we could move any of the dates for renewals and food. It does say one year from issuance, not December, January, December. Many of them say January to December 31st. So we could move our year, you move it to say we talked about March maybe, March 1st or something like that. So that possibility is there. I bounced it off a few of the permit holders. They liked it, so maybe what we would probably maybe what we would do is you know give them an extra you know three months, three months whatever months. whether it's this year or the next year whenever we decide to change it if we uh, just to make it all agree. more administratively functional. Yeah, yeah, and well, the town is invested in a permitting system, uh, accounting system. Uh, it's called a Munis um, Tyler. Everything. I mean, we're going to be able to do our HR. We can, you know, right now it's, we're still papered, timesheets, uh, days off, all that. It's all going to be in computers, and the permitting is all going to be on on computers. So, you know, you could check on the status of your building permit, all those things. That's coming, and our division is imp beginning to implement it, we're starting uh, to develop it in February. Be implemented come November. So it might be a good year to push it to March <laughs> because it's a new system. It might be difficult, you know, in the middle of our our very arduous time of November and December, maybe it would be a good time to push it up to March. So how so would you deal with the, with the rollover um, from January to March, like that time frame there? I, I, would, months. I would think that what we do is we go out with the same a reminder at the same time or an an education that we have now these are not due until March rather than you know Even having it all so that's not notification seven. wise but oh. uh, technical wise if you have a permit that goes from mm -hmm. January 1 to December 31 right. and we extend can we do a blanket extension of all permits I think from we January, uh, January 1 through March 
15 or March 1 or whatever. That wouldn't just, be that difficult. I don't do you just call it yeah. enforcement discretion? Right. Well, we could send up something, send out something, uh, you know, a document, you know, so that they would have it. But we're well, the ones one who question. are going to care the mostly. The other question is the financial so, part yeah. of it. Again, these are not big fees, but are you sort of giving people a three free months? I mean, it would still become a year from March to March, so but we, yeah, you might want to talk with. Um, well, the good well, news is it's a revolving be, fund, yeah. so it's not quite as, um, if long as they get paid before yeah. June 30th, they'd mm -hmm. still all come in in the same fiscal year. So it would just, they wouldn't be coming in December, they'd be coming in in March. Oh, okay, I see. So it wouldn't really give, you know, it wouldn't be less for that year. My, my, uh, propo my proposed budget would like be about would, the same. This it wouldn't would be create the same. a cash flow problem. No. Can't you just put an expiration date? Uh, just extend the expiration date? They all have from January 1st to March. Well, but we, the ones for now have already been issued. Or yeah. if that's if that's an issue, we could also start it the next year. Um, you know, these years fly by, <laughs> so it's not. Well, we're, so we're trying to relieve. Concern. We're trying to relieve the yeah. the the the, the, yeah. the winter right. the winter of 15 season. We'd love and drama. I love the idea. It's so, a great idea. It certainly will. You know, need some education, but people will really like it. I'm sure. Now, I haven't looked at all the other ones, but that at least would help. Um, you know, the permit holders of operators of food, which you know they're the busy ones at that time of year. And then we could look at others to decide. Some of them are January to December. But I really appreciate that idea because that's that was a. So, what was, so what was our renewal status like, though, as far as the date time? I mean, um, when we last talked about November, you still had a pretty fair number that hadn't um, renewed. I, we were renewed until the, <laughs> the 31st oh, yeah. or the 1st, shall we say. Yeah. Yeah, New Year's Eve, those yeah. people come. Oh, yeah. yeah. We call them. How much is it yep. worth you to drive down here? Yep. And then, yeah, and then we <laughs> so closed early day. that day. So, uh -huh. and we didn't know we were going to close yeah. early. Yeah. So, so yeah, no food down the place hour. paid double fee this year, not one, oh, because good. we just kept calling and calling and calling. <laughs> not to, it won't be the same for, you know, if a septic installer hasn't, if they come in April, we'll charge them double or you know, a dumpster, that type of thing. We gave them one or two calls, but we're not going to chase them down, but we will get them eventually. I mean, we will chase them down, but not, you know, not to give them a break. Let's give them a break on the price. Okay. So yeah, she did a terrific job and all our volunteers helped quite a bit. Great. Which is good. Um, um, I'm not trying to open a bag of worms, but remind me that the trucks and the routes, is that a, a January 1 thing or is that? Yes. Um, how did we, that go? We actually met in this room with police, what we do is we try to meet with them, try every year and talk about you know, the new placard permit colors, introduce, there were two new officers that do enforcement. So they started, we usually give a grace period, um, they started enforcing this week. Um, one ticket was given out this week. It's, a, it's weird, uh, they pay, but they don't pick them up. We have a pickup box with a dozen, you know, the applications just waiting for them to come come get the permits and placards and what they do is we get the application she determines how many of each they get they they find out what their fee is at that time they don't pay it until they pick it up so when they come pick it up they'll pay the fee but we don't usually send out you know a stack of placards like this they just they drive right by so we've called them many times we'll probably call them again in the past, I would call that uh, monitoring uh, these trash trucks leaving Holt going on 125 was an issue of concern, mm -hmm. and it seemed to have disappeared. Is it still an issue of concern right now? As far as what direction they go, where they go right or where they go left? Well, if you, as you drive up and you see the triangle of Holt Road, you'll notice that our large electronic sign is facing down that road, and I think what it says is, did you pick up your, <laughs> do you have your placards <laughs> and permits on it <laughs> to try and get them to remind them um, that they have to have them? And then there's also still the signs that say, you know, truckers must, you know, must go this way. I think the signs that go left. Um, 
you know, have we had we haven't had complaints on the 125 this past year. They do we do get some complaints that cut through uh, Bradford Street and come down that way. Um, some other roads. So the police have been advised, you know, that too. But they're um, we usually give a few weeks grace period, but they're out there now enforcing. And Bradford Street so. is in such tough shape right now that I think that you'll yeah. take a truck and then you lose your suspension. It's be silly to go down that way just to put one over on us. <laughs> yeah, it's silly, but it's it's still a regulation. And as I said in the past, I don't yeah. know. I don't know anywhere else in the United States that's a regulation. Although it may be a regulation in other areas, I just don't know. And I'm still very much into yeah. this business. The site assignment process, you know, just that's gave, where it came gave out our board that, that uh, yeah, but that's 30, 40 years ago. No, no, this no, was, it was, that was the retro. 1990, about 1996, 1997. When they did the retro, they really, really I thought that was going back to the early 80s. No, 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 no. This this was oh. negotiated by some of the current selectmen. The site assignment okay. originally in the 80s, I think, gave the authority, um, but no no truck routes were ever enforced at that time. Oh, okay. Then when they did the retrofit, okay. then mm -hmm. the selectmen were negotiating uh, things, you know, tipping fees, all those things, and around that time they said, you know what, we need that, we need the regulation. They hired Ken Kimmel, um, mm -hmm. and they, they worked with the Board of Health in the 80s. Was it 90s? In the 90s. I yeah. It's in the, in the 90s. Because I, I mm -hmm. come in 94, we, so we were, were both here. here. Yeah. So 96. I was going to say it was about 96, 96 97. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And we had they all the you know, trucking companies came. They worked out routes and direct, you know, which way. And yeah, I would be willing to bet on that that there are other facilities and other towns that have been through a process that have unique things that or requirements that we don't have here that yeah. are issues that are, are esoteric to that geography or whatever, that population. And I think the, the obvious you know, stickers and placards, I think, is a unique, is definitely a unique thing. Because you, you see our stickers everywhere. When you're up in New Hampshire, you see them. So I think you know, a lot of people may get permits, but they don't necessarily put a sticker on there you know, for enforcement. It, it was just a unique thing for that particular. It was also the, the politics of the so, time. It was the oh, GSLD yes. had just gone in, yeah. and the the townspeople were feeling somewhat overburdened as yeah. being a, a regional place where everybody's mm -hmm. trash, sewer, water, all those things were seeming to be coming. Yeah, and that yeah, was the, that was the that was not time. unique. Uh, there are in the United States about a hundred waste energy right. facilities, a little less. Similar to the uh, the size and type. No, but it's unique in that of plant and not you know that, over. that there's no and there's no nothing in Methuen, mm -hmm. there's nothing in all these towns that are bringing stuff into here. And I was going to say I've I've actually worked in most, if not all, of these facilities at one time or another, and I don't know anything like this in in the nation. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just not yeah. familiar with. It. Well, that's how new, unique this population is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we are unique. Well, at We've that, been told that. At that point in time, this yeah. is what was decided. And yeah. It's it now belongs to us. Yeah, that's that's true. So be it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of which, um, I went to a meeting the other night, and the uh, commissioners of GLSD, they are looking at a fourth digester. They have three anaerobic digesters now that pro they process their sludge through and they create pellets, um, which is used as fertilizer. And they run, I think they use some energy, I can't remember what they use it for right now. But the fourth is going to be, they're going to be include the organics, that are the organic food waste. Um, food waste. Is, it, is it exclusively food waste? Or it is this well, it not the fourth one won't be exclusive for it, but it's because of it. Oh. Um, there, mm -hmm. yes, so that's so. 140,000 tons a day is the proposal. It's about 12 trucks because it's going to come not as leaf lettuce. It's going to come as a slurry um, in large. It's going to look like septic trucks, mm -hmm. basically large tanker trucks. 140,000 tons. Yeah. Yeah. Is that because? Wait a minute. Start, really? start over again. So okay. So the law changed in June yeah. last year. Uh, this is at GLSD. Yes. Yes. So but the law yeah. changed in June uh, last year. Large generators of food waste can no longer put it in their waste stream. So the likes of Stop and Shop and Shaw's and Merrimack College, anyone who generates more than a 
ton a day, I want to say, um, cannot put it in their dumpsters, cannot put it in their trash. So they have to find another stream, another place to take it. Um, historically, pig so farms and what's such. What's the reasoning for that, I guess? To get it out of the waste stream. They, it's, and to use it for other things like energy, okay. which is right. what's going to happen with this. Uh, so basically the law came in and now the system is going to come in to what to do up. with it. So mm -hmm. now we have to, now the haulers have to figure it out. So some of the trash companies, waste management, you know, others, they're coming up with how they're going to haul it or, you know, and then where is it going to go? So some of it's going to go to pig farms, some of it's going to go to different places. And GLSD is the first that is, they have a new director there, but it started with the previous director that is exploring um, putting that fourth digester and then so they bring in this and they add it to the waste stream and they will generate enough energy to be off the grid if there's ever a power outage again so they won't you know they will be self-sustainable with that so which will stop the problem with the overflow when there's a blackout and they can't treat so now they will have their own power to power up their whole plant if you look at it in I guess where I'm going with this is um, I've invited uh, the new director to come in March. So at our March meeting, uh, she will come as long as uh, well as um, probably an engineer or two <laughs> that are um, they're going to come and uh, explain. It's they're very excited. It has not been approved by the commissioners. The only thing that was approved by the commissioners now is the expenditure to take this idea and which in its infancy get it to the 90% design level um, so that they can look at the real numbers. Right now the numbers are, they just sound amazing for them. They, they spend about two million in electrical now. Um, they'll far exceed that savings um, by generating more because they have, they'll be able to have credits or they call them different names that they can actually, it's a commodity, and sell this block of power. Um, is that so liquid salt waste? waste? Mm -hmm. Is the waste, is it about liquid It's going to be, well, it's, it, it's going to be a slurry. You mean Slum. food waste? It's going to be like a slurry. Slum. But it's no longer considered solid waste. So now that a definition changed in DEP. Normally, you'd be seeing a site assignment that for this structure uh, to as determine a as a solid waste facility. The, the same time that the regulation changed uh, requiring this is the same time that the definition was changed that when food waste leaves a property like a stop, stop and shop, it's no longer considered solid waste. Mm. So that it's, uh, it's, an, it's an organic. Um, but they call so it's it a definition change, not a process of making it into a slurry, because you think of a slurry as something. It, it, yeah. I don't. I don't look very often in dumpsters, but if I went into the grocery yeah. stores, yeah. I'd see heads of lettuce and some this and some that. It doesn't look very much like a slurry. It'd have to be made into that somehow. But so that that was a big change for us. That would have been a very you know arduous process, of course, legal and everything else with the site assignment. So this that meeting is definition. Just informational, really. So this is going to be informational. Yes, we will not have jurisdiction over it. Um, we do get, even though we don't have jurisdiction over GLSD now, we still get all the things they promised. I get monthly reports on the pellets, making sure that they meet the standards. I, you know, I get whatever maintenance anytime they shut down, startups, things like that. So we we do get. They're very open uh, with their information, which was more on a promise. It's not a law that we get it, but it's in their, you know, agreement with the town. So all the towns, I mean, um, Andrew Mailer is our commissioner now on our member, North Andrew's member on the commission. So, you know, he is looking at it from two points of view. One is the host community and one is, you know, is this good for GLSD? So that's why they really just, you know, they approve just the expenditure of that money. But since they're the first, and it's such a new and exciting idea, there's a ton of money out there. So the entire design phase is covered by grant money. So this From is multiple, an anaerobic um, uh, digester. Yes. Uh, and the off-gas would be methane. 
and the methane gas would be fed to a, a gas-fired turbine. Mm -hmm. Do they have that Sounds. turbine in place right now, do you know? Because that's what they need to generate electricity. They already have three digesters. This will be a fourth if you look at it. But I'm talking about a yeah. turbine to, to so generate electricity. I believe, yeah. it's, it's a fascinating project. Yeah, on the, Find out more about it. Yeah, there's, um, they have some preliminary plans that, that they'll show you all the things they do have to add, and that could be one of that's the That's how you generate electricity you know, with the, with the gas fire turbine. Right now they mm. use the heat for something. I forget what they use it for now. Mm. Um, so it's they're very excited, but of course the commissioners haven't approved going forward because it's a twenty-one. So million who has jurisdictional authority of 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 each community? Of just the commission. The commission. Commis the yeah. commission only can decide to do it or not. Mm -hmm. There's. I mean, they have permitting to the state or. Yet yeah, actually, they're getting a lot of money from. DEP and from other um, energy type groups and things. So their DEP they had a representative at the meeting, and they're very excited about it. Of course, um, you know there's all kinds of. Andrew is going to well represent the town. You know Andrew Mallon, so he'll be looking at our interests because of course, you know, one of his questions or the other questions was, okay, so we're first. That's great. What happens when ten of them get built? Do we get our? Do we, is there still enough of this waste? Oh, and you know, sustain. right? Because I think this is about a quarter of what they estimate is going to be pulled out. That's a large chunk, of you know, and that's if it's efficiently done. Everybody does it, right? So you know, and, and some the byproduct of them, goes yeah. in. The byproduct then goes into the solid waste stream. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah. it's 140,000 tons no. uh, a day. I mean, that think of the magnitude of waste that would be food yeah, waste. That's, that's, you know, so it, 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 it's not. It's so a, it's so it, it may be 140,000 gallons, mm -hmm. but 140,000 gallons. All right, we'll go no. with gallons then. Yeah. <laughs> um, gallons but, but, uh, is, is, it's the is, same. What do they use when they. Um, I think it was the same metric of unit that they use it for going to uh, the site assignments to TBI, isn't that? Tons? That's tons. Yeah. That's tons. That, that's I think it's about six hundred yeah. tons a day TBI. Yeah. I'm not sure of that. It's five hundred. Five hundred. Okay, close. Yeah. Cl cl close well, enough. they'll they'll give us all the numbers, but they they want to get to the full design so they can really give solid numbers because right now it's just a projected uh, projection. Now, is 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 this new facility will it actually be in Lawrence, or is it on the line, or is it not no, in? In with if you look at an aerial of GS GLSD right now, there's three circular digesters and room for the fourth. So but but it's, it's all in one. It's like, for example, the airport. Andover. It's, in it's in North Andover. Yes. All of it. okay. Off Clark okay. Street. Yeah, right at the base of... Sutton. Well, if they have a design plan or something, they could send us yeah. even ahead of time so we could yeah. think up these questions rather than to try to Absolutely. digest it all from yeah. their presentation. Digest no it. Yeah. <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a slurry of information. If they can send us something... Oh. Like it just seems strange because, it, because yeah. you say it's totally yeah. located in North Andover, yeah. and yet the Board of Health. It is it's not, not considered fault. solid waste. We have jurisdiction over solid waste. Mm. Yeah. It's waste, nevertheless. It's not solid waste. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need any more. <laughs> okay. Well, right. the Board was highly involved in the digesters originally, and now lots of lawsuits and things happened yeah, well, a while ago. <laughs> a while ago. But we don't. Don't okay, um, septic season status? So they're very happy to come, just letting you know. For March? Um, I think everything as of actually yesterday. <laughs> um, I think Michelle did a final inspection. Um, this on is the one we issued the extension mm -hmm. to? Mm -hmm. So they got it. He said would, he guaranteed it would be done by Christmas, didn't he? As far as I know, it's a... That's what I remember. Yeah. What Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. I have no how, other how far is it? I think she did the final inspection. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah. This week. Oh, that's good. I believe so. And there are no other uh, beyond the date ones. So that was it. So the season is closed now till March first, or March depending 1st. on weather. Okay. But of course, you know. And then you'll typically a little ahead of time get some applications to have that are people getting ready to start right away. I'm sorry. You'll get like in February some applications of people that are looking to get started. It's right ongoing away. all the time. Um, so like soil testing, engineers will put in for that. Mm -hmm. Now they'll do the soil testing. They'll submit the plans. Mill River reviews the plans and approve the plans, and then they'll 
they usually put it out to bid, you know, to mm -hmm. however many people they want to as homeowners. Okay. And then they, they, they will be licensed installers. Okay. Um, the mosquito control we've handled already. And we'll add in a little bit of a commu another communication item, something that came up after the agenda was published, and that was the Merrimack College cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I'll let Susan talk about that, and I'll just kind of put my Should I go at the end of the it? story? <laughs> For those who are waiting to hear, tomorrow morning the uh, dining hall known as Sparky's at Merrimack College will be operating um, in full, so all students will be back eating out of there as well as the many places that they can eat. Uh, Merrimack College um, did, we had given them a, a you know, four-point protocol that we asked for. They, you know, as far as providing us documentation from pest control, from uh, for plans going forward, um, you know, so that we can monitor it. Uh, they met all those milestones today and we did a walkthrough and we gave them the okay to go forward, but we will be sending, we will be having our staff go in at probably at least monthly or as much as need, you know, our consultants. And they're also going to have extra um, observers watching. That's part of, you know, as well. Now when the staff goes in, does the staff uh, also take a look at the, uh, the wounds, the students' wounds? Because I understand that about 10% of them that have refrigerators had an infestation of uh, cockroaches in the oh, past. That's a new one. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm only going by what I read. I don't know if it's true. Oh, was that in an article or, or something? Yeah. Oh. And, but this is data it. information again, and I was just wondering how inclusive our inspection is. No, we rarely, um, if someone made a complaint, if someone it's made a dining hall doesn't include the rest of the Right, our food inspection yeah, does not food include building, the dining food hall. Student services yeah. building. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have, several food permits over there, so we're in the Volpe Center, we're in the library, um, the Warrior's Den, there's a, there's a pub, you know, there's a lot of different food areas that are inspected, so in a lot of different buildings by our food consultant. Uh, dorms are not generally inspected. Um, their food, if they have even little kitchenettes, that's not really our jurisdiction. But if they, if any cl complaint ever came in, whether it be that or mold or something, we would of course go out and some of the dorms are, all that. are in Mandover too. So are they going to hire food consultants to a company? There, there are That's auditors really that help. That is. Um, okay. Yeah, that, you know, so they a company like Sodexo always already has that kind of company, you know, doing audits and things. So they're going to be stepping that up for, you know, for at least probably through the, the end of this school year, you know evaluate as we go. Speaking of Sodexo, mm -hmm. they are taking over the, um, oh, what do you call it, so? Um, oh, well, yeah, I mean, the, ca the camps. Every, so Sodexo so is Sodexo doing is, everything at the yeah. college now. They're there. So camps, pools, ice rink, all, all facilities and maintenance. Sodexo. So they're all Sodexo um, employee, employees now. They're, they're from a wall thing, I believe. Do you know? I don't Sue no, and I no, had a meeting sorry. actually with the new person there at Merrimack yeah. from Sodexo um, about camps. And that's going to be, camps are going to be a big deal this year. Yeah. They're going to go back to, um, I don't mean to get off the subject, but seeing who's brought up Sodexo, I didn't want to mention this anyway. Um, at Merrimack, I mean, there, you know how many camps there are at Merrimack. There's a lot. And remember what happened last year, you know, that little incident. Um, with the uh, unlicensed. The unlicensed camp and the gentleman, yeah. So um, we, you know, we really want to get a hold on, on what's going on over there. And, and they this do year, too. Yeah, and then this year I felt like we were floundering. I mean, we didn't have any contact person over there. We had no, and it was very frustrating. I had an extremely frustrating camp here. Um, and, you know, say Sue and I, we didn't have anybody. We used to have a contact person that said, this is the camps that are coming. They would steer the camps in the right direction. I, it was always hit or miss, though. They'd have somebody that was and good, and then they'd leave, and they'd go, ah, oh, you know, we just get that. But anyway, so this year, what's going to happen over there is we've, we've already had a meeting with the, with the woman, and the camps, like, like the basketball camps and stuff that were, there's a lot of them, the boys and girls basketball, they decided they didn't want to be at camp 
anymore. So they kind of changed their, tweaked their regs a little. So now that they, they were a clinic, which they were always a camp, and they were always very involved, a lot of kids, a lot of, you know, going on over there. Well, that's not going to be anymore. They're not, they're, they are going to ask them to go back to camps. There's not going to be any flying under the radar as clinics and stuff like that. It's going to be, it, so there's going to be a, a lot going on over there. Um, I think they're going to cut camps. down on some of their camps as well. Because they're really going to, so? that's what they told me. Yeah. You mean a lot of people come in? Yeah, just not as wide, yeah. but I mean, they just, you know, uh, every field was rented and yeah. that kind of thing. They did, they had every day. So they're really going to yeah. be on top of it this Computer year. Computer to given there. It was It was yeah. just, yeah, it, and it sort of was a free-for-all, I, I think, last year, and it, it's, it, you know, it didn't end pretty, and I, I don't think, I think they're really nervous about their, you know, reputation this I year. I think it'll be high quality. So I think this year. Well, I think like, given, yeah, yeah. this, they're going to want to, they, they, much they can't afford to, mm -hmm. no, they can't afford to not have their ducks I mean, it, in a row again. It, as they say, this story had legs yeah. that yeah. surprised me. Yeah. I was very lucky. I was in the car a lot yesterday. I was lucky you were in the car a lot last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The first it was first published on Wednesday morning in the Eagle Tribune, and yesterday I spoke between yesterday and today to the Boston Globe, WBZ, <laughs> Channel Five, Channel Seven, Eagle Tribune, Citizen, and the Patch two or three times. That's a lot. I suppose it's all picked up from the Eagle Tribune story, mm -hmm. maybe because the college is involved. I. I don't know how they all got my cell phone number, but they all contacted me. I didn't have to call any of them. That would be me. <laughs> I thought Every that was the plan. <laughs> well, you're, you're, more, you're more popular than uh, Tom Brady. I uh, didn't hear, no. hear, hear about him on these But it was too. funny on, on yesterday morning to see well, the president on, on, on the left side of the Eagle Tribune above the fold in the cafeteria and Tom Drover just quote on the right side. So. <laughs> My, well, my office yesterday was waiting for the right? satellite truck to show up. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> luckily enough, that, oh, that gosh, didn't. Yeah. Wow. But it was uh, it, it was a very um, interest generating story uh, from city desks of all these places. And you're right. I think the school would not. Well, I mean, want to have this because of what happened happen last year again. with the camp. You know, with the uh, the camps being run, not. I mean, you know, not legal. Was a bit, you know, they they just have to get have to have their ducks in a row this year. Absolutely have to. So it's gonna, I think it's going to be a busy. We've we've already got a couple of new camps cropping up. It's going to be a busy camp season. Yeah. All right. So you'll be busy. I'll be busy. Are there any other communication items that anybody would like to bring up? Yeah. Two uh, quick issues. Um, it's a flu shot. Sorry. I no, have the. Uh, me. I had read that uh, the effectiveness, and I believe they're talking about the trial, is uh, unusually limited this year. That was and a quad. The, it's a quad? Yeah. But you're right, yes. Yeah. The effectiveness was less, yes? 30%. 30%. Yeah, yeah. 30%. yeah the, the number I saw was 27%, and I'm saying, wow. usually in the 60s. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't get it right this year. No. Mm. Well, they decided so that's the quad, but that's not the try. Is that? Is we gave the quad. Gave out. The quad. It was not in. It, it was deficient in. Uh, all well, if it wasn't there, it wasn't there. So it wasn't wasn't there any of yeah. it was the well, try it, or the It wasn't just not the end of it. Talk about. I think they're talking no. about national. Oh no, no, it was yeah. a vaccine. It's yeah. not yeah. the. Yeah. It, it was the, the vaccine, vaccine, which was they global. Guess, which they guess. They guess at this time of the year what's going to happen. You know, nine months from now. They do some. They don't just completely guess, but they do yeah. some studying and looking at the yeah. viral stuff. And I'm sorry, they don't guess it, it, yeah. estimate worldwide, probably. Yeah, but it's 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 a there's a prediction that's not mm -hmm. foolproof. Yeah. And this year the prediction was not a little off. Not as good as it's historically been. They mm -hmm. they usually more usually like it's in order of eighty percent, sixty to seventy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's this this year they just missed. And then there's also the fact that too that it sometimes you know it, it's not a hundred percent effective. Anyway, so that brings yeah, your it's sixty something yeah. percent. Yeah, anyway. so that brings your yeah. And so. couldn't there be more than one strain going around too, right? Or is it generally just one? It comes in cycles. I think that okay. early in the season there's one that will be uh -huh. predominant, and then later there'll be another. It'll kind of have a bit of a sine wave. And the other point I want to make too, and it'll be quick. Um, 
uh, as I but mentioned, I think Joe, level, I mean, it, none of us are infectious disease people, but they also there's been I, I've seen a little bit about what you think of how it's been versus if nobody got immunized, that there's been some protection. I mean, it's it, it's you can't completely cast aspersions on the vaccine at all because if there've been this, you know. It's not completely ineffective. Again, the idea of the herd immunity that if we're protecting even 30% of the people, that spreads out sort of hopefully in a good way as opposed to like we talked about the norovirus, some sick people get out that spreads. Well, by keeping the healthy people that are, uh, that are those exposed to people that are um, more at risk, it helps that way. But yes, 30 is not 60 or 80, that's for sure. The other point I was going to make, too, is, uh, uh, as I said, to mentioned to several of you, I, I did contact the North End of uh, I was listening to, actually, I was listening to a, a Board of Health meeting on, on TV, and uh, it's a very, very unpleasant buzz noise. And so I contacted them, and, and as well as any other uh, uh, town meeting that's televised. And I said, why is that? And I was told that there was a problem with Comcast that they're working on right now. That is not a problem with Verizon, but only Comcast. So those of us that have Comcast, uh, it, it, is, it is so unpleasant to watch it and listen to it. it, it, it you, you can't even watch it. So it's not it, the town's issue. It's not the cam's fault. It's no, the Comcast. No, well, it's, good it's, so, okay. so, so I was told it was, the, uh, it was the air handler it gets picked up by the microphone. Interesting. That's not what I was told. I have Fios. That sounds fine. Yeah. But, and I was just speaking with the man uh, that was here uh, earlier this evening. If I'm switching channels, it comes on. And, and, and so, what, so what he told me, he said, well, look, if, if you want to watch any of these programs, he said, just go to the website, which is notheendovercam.org, then, then click channel, then click government cam, then click the shows, and you can see whatever you want, regardless of what do you have at home. And it's very clear. Any day. Is there a link yeah. to that on the town website to the cam? You know, I, I don't think there is. No, that would, so, I don't think so. People go to the website. Maybe you could ask if that's, I mean, that's a point, is that, because the cam only, it, it's, I've had people tell me they see me on TV at 4 in the morning. Yeah. And if you want to see this meeting, you. You don't have to do you, that. You don't you have to do that. If you could ask them to put a link to the cam yeah. on. Sure. Any time. People, people, want, to, people yeah. want to see what I'll happened see at one meeting or another. Sometimes they could a link direct them to the website to find the cam to. But I'll repeat that for any person or two that may be listening right now. <laughs> it's uh, northandovercam.org. Yeah. And you can get from there to any town meeting. I think there was Going back to it, is it, you sort of go to the home page and you can pick yeah, out. Is, no, I yeah. found that I found that out this evening. No. Oh, yeah, tonight. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've been there. You can pick out the date you wanted to watch the meeting. Yeah. How far uh, back are the meetings? Not that I'm going to. I, I have three years, oh. five years. Is it, I haven't heard that. I, I just looked at it once just for the heck of it. And. So apparently on Comcast we all sound like Donald Duck, but on Fios we all sound like ourselves. Yes. Okay. So what is it, North Andover Cam? North Andover Cam dot org. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, capital letters or, or, or not. Then you go to channel, then you go to government cam, then you go to shows, and there they are. And you also, you, you can pick the date. Yeah. Um, Any day. Like we're the last Thursday of the month, but you can see the selectmen's meetings, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Anything that's televised. Well, they dated the month, and you can see what was yeah. on that day. Right, right. So it's a really, it's a good website. It says to me that uh, it, because it's so unpleasant uh, uh, watching this on on Comcast, it says to me that probably few if anyone's really watching it. I mean, yeah, I brought it to their attention. Really, you, you can't. <laughs> I'm talking really about like any town, any town, <laughs> town meeting. You, it's unwatchable on Comcast. Wow, it's so unpleasant. With a background buzz. Some were okay and some weren't. No, no, I, 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 I noticed it too. Yeah. Because my wife likes to watch the school committee meetings and it's it's just like a constant buzz. You can't, yeah. you can't, you barely hear it. It's not, no, I used to have Comcast and it right. wasn't really audible, so. Or she likes to get it live. Yeah. They have it live on the website. Was it live streaming? Yeah, I, I, it's live streaming. Yeah. If that's the main one. Like, we won't probably be live today because there's probably another meeting, that's why we got yeah, school meeting tonight. So they're probably showing school, although school might be on a different channel. I don't know. Do they have their own channel? But if you go to that northendovercam.org website, yeah. it is clear, so I was told. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Great. Yeah. 
Very good. Uh, the only question I have is, when do we vote? Um, as we vote each year, where oh, you would make the decision, you and Susan would make the decision, you as chairman would make the final. Regarding mosquitoes. Regarding spring. Is it after we well, get the best that management? Was, we voted last year to put that in the plan, didn't we? So that may be carried it might over. Might be in the best management. Right, so that's right. As we say, is that after we get the plan? I think you or that? may have said put it in the plan so you didn't have to vote on it each year this time, maybe. I have a vague memory. Uh, this is unique to North Andover, but. Um, well, we'll be getting the best management plan. Yeah, and if it's, it's early. not in there, we can either have them change it or we can then vote. But we had no bad experiences with having that in there this year. No. Yeah, this is just like the summary. Um, well, we can do it as an amendment if we need to when it comes out. So. Okay. No, no other issues. Uh, these other things are informational for us. We don't need to put that on record here. Okay. Not sure I got what you meant. Um, the tickets on cigarette sales that were issued. Oh, I don't think she probably just put those. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll look at this later. Then. Oh, one last thing. Um, our uh, tobacco regulation goes into effect next month. Correct. Uh, with the first. The first, yeah. yes. Yeah. Andover's does it as well. <coughs> they're going to 21. Tom, is this, is this an, a, a, this regulation, will we be discussing this every year or how frequent? Because I know a lot of towns around here have increased the age to 21, and that's something that we may want to consider sometime in the future. We're 18. We've already been approached through Susan by somebody at Children's Hospital who's in what is it called? Dr. Hartman um, is in a group that's sort of encouraging or advocating for that change. Um, I sent him a note. He contacted Susan, gave him an email. I sent him a message saying, we've just enacted some new regulations. We've, we didn't, I said we didn't do 21, but we did some other things. And I listed what we put in there. And he said, I think um, somewhere down the road, our, our board would be open to considering and, and discussing it and hearing his um, argument, if you will. He's a physician at Children's. I think he'd be very above board and, and um, Would you like he, to stand he obviously has you sort of something he's promoting, but I think he'd be very open to discussion. And he said, let me know when you want to talk about it. So if you want to talk about it and consider it, we could do that. If you want to take a little time off the cigarette regulation for a while, we could wait also. We spent a lot of time and effort and energy on this regulation, and uh, I think it's done good. Uh, this may have been a, a, an oversight. I don't know how difficult it would be to change that one item there, but perhaps it warrants for the well, consideration can, later this year. If the it's board chooses, we can do um, what's it called a, a not an amendment, but yeah. uh, an edit or, or something. We can change a clause without. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a state regulation, whereas with the dental or the medical regulations, you have to open everything up. The board could entertain a specific change to the regulation, like we've done before when we did that with uh, the violations and how to deal with who was the actual seller to an underage. So if um, I think we've got some other things going on, but he's open to that, and he's going around the state and available and talking to communities about it. Um, I, I didn't ask him for specifics. I could see if he has something he'd like to send as the initial um, introduction. introduction, and then we can look at that. See what and consider. Months he might have available. Looking forward, you know. If you, you take a look at the regulations, like in Lawrence, I believe it's 21, Andover, I believe it's 21. Just and so where are they going to come now? They're going to come to North Andover if they're between 18 and 21. Just that Ron, that. Ron can get that statistic together and he'd be happy to come as well, I'm sure. Lawrence that day. is 18. I think it's 21. 21. I, mean, I believe. I could yeah, be mistaken, but I believe. It's yeah, that proposed. Yeah, proposed. Yeah, proposed regular. It's proposed. Yeah. Andover's yeah. is approved. Yeah. Yeah. They start at the same yeah. time. Ours is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, all the communities, you know, it's an in individual thing. So um, Andover didn't do the uh, cigar thing, but they did the 21. So you know, but sure, can discuss anytime. <coughs> okay. Okay. Motion to close. Make a motion to close. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So it's 835, 838.